Western Norway, a small community shut off from the rest of the country by fjords and mountains. From the very earliest days, the fjord was a most important means of communication. Long boat trips were a regular feature of everyday life for the inhabitants of the county of Sognefjorda. Travel over long distances was time-consuming and expensive. Brand new roads and tunnels have gradually replaced narrow twisting roads of western Norway, often prone to rock slides. Over the last few years, priority has been given to expanding a national trunk road network that will bind different parts of the country together, reduce travel time and offer cheaper transport for the national economy. time, journeys over the mountains between western and eastern Norway have entailed difficult driving conditions, with driving in convoy, long waits for motorists, and extra costs. In periods of bad weather, several of the mountain passes may be closed for days at a time without warning. For over a hundred years, the road over Filefjell and Lardal safest way of crossing the mountains between Bergen and Oslo. And in 1975, Parliament confirmed that the most important trunk road between eastern and western Norway would continue to follow this route in the future. After the opening of the 11.4 kilometer long Gudvang Tunnel in 1991, Planning centered on a huge trunk road project, a tunnel between Aurlam and Lardal. In the summer of 1992, Parliament gave the go-ahead for the project and, after two years planning, the director of the Norwegian Public Roads Administration was in a position to light the fuse of the first lasting operation on the Aurlam side. <laughs> <laughs> the Song of Fjordana section of the Norwegian Public Roads Administration has experienced tunnelers who have already been involved in the construction of long tunnels. So they are not phased by the prospect of being the longest tunnel in the world, even if it takes five years for them to meet the construction team coming from the other side. The Norwegian Public Roads Administration is itself responsible for the tunnel starting in Arlan. Here, a continuous 11 kilometer long tunnel will be built through the mountain. Over on the Lardal side, contractor Egg Henriksen will be responsible for construction. But before they can set about building the main tunnel, they must build an auxiliary tunnel. This spur is to start in Tynjadalen and go two kilometers straight into the mountain. From this point on, work will start on the main tunnel itself. From here on, work can alternate between two drilling faces, and the tunnel can be driven towards both Aurlan and Lardal at the same time. This means that 50 meters a day can be tunneled in the Lardal tunnel. From three points of attack, the tunnel will grow 200 meters longer every week and eight kilometers a year. The estimated cost of the project is 976 million kronor. Time span, 1995 to 2001. Tunnel, 24.5 kilometers. 16 laybys for turning. 48 breakdown laybys. But how do they find their way? The meeting point towards Arlan is over 10 kilometers into the mountain mass, 
and more than a thousand meters underground. To do this, they use navigation satellites that indicate a precise location from which further measurements can be made. Finely programmed finders indicate the direction to be followed by the tunnel. As the tunnel progresses, permanent markers are drilled in, indicating the exact position. A laser beam from these markers pinpoints the drilling rig, giving a computer information for it to calculate the precise point the next drill hole should be made. On the rig itself, there is a laser mounting that checks that the cross section is correct and that the work is going according to plan. The drilling is automated and the tunnelers must be computer literate as well as having experience with rock and geology. The procedure is so accurate that when the tunnels meet in four years time there will be a tolerance of no more than 15 centimeters. A total of 5,000 testing operations must be ignited before the tunnels meet. In each drilling face, a hundred holes have to be drilled before blasting, and that takes 500 kilos of explosive. After each blasting operation, the tunnel is five meters longer. Last tunnel charges begins with the four big penetration holes in the center. The rock is blasted out and, in quick succession, the other series of charges are detonated. Finally, the charges at the tunnel wall and roof are detonated. Here, the charges are weaker so as to prevent unnecessary cracking of the rock surface. After each blast operation, the toxic gases from the explosion are quickly extracted by means of efficient ventilation fans. Removal of the loose rock can start just a few minutes after blasting. Each blasting operation loosens 500 cubic meters of rock. The bucket on the loader lifts 6 cubic meters at a time and quickly fills up the 24 cubic meter capacity of the articulated truck. Getting on for 200,000 loads of rubble have to be trucked out of the tunnel. When this trucking operation is complete, shortly after the beginning of the next millennium, the tunnel mouth end will be covered with earth and sown with grass seed. Landscape architects have the task of molding the new landscape so that it blends in naturally with the surroundings. Over on the Arland side, the rubble will be dumped in Flom. 10 kilometers away from the tunnel entrance, where it will be used to build a new harbor and a foot and cycle path along the edge of the field. In the construction of such an incredibly long tunnel, the road authority has extremely strict requirements for the environment and for safety. 
the construction gangs receive thorough instruction. And near the drilling face, there is an emergency rescue chamber containing first aid gear, gas masks, and oxygen cylinders, thus providing shelter in case of a disaster. During construction, the ventilation ducts are also extended as the tunnel progresses into the mountain, bringing fresh air to the drilling face and providing clean air and a good working environment for the workers. The species of rock between Aurland and Laudal is Gneiss bedrock. The huge mountain mass overhead puts enormous pressure on the vaulting of the tunnel. The pressure is so great that stones break away from the surface. This is called rock burst, and much of this phenomenon has been encountered in the Lardal Tunnel. To ensure that stone does not come loose in this way, the rock is reinforced with security bolts. It is estimated 200,000 bolts will be needed before motorists drive through in the new millennium. In addition to this, the rock walls and roof of the tunnel are sealed with high-pressure sprayed concrete. This provides a fiberglass cement layer which, combined with the security bolts, binds the rock together. And this element of danger is removed for the construction workers and, later on, for motorists. The Public Roads Administration is also concerned with the outside environment. Mud and drilling water are sucked up and cleaned before release. The Somnofjordana section of the Public Roads Administration has long experience in tunnel construction. So they know how important it is to think holistically stress has been laid on the road construction, blending well into the beautiful landscape of Indrasong. Long tunnels have already been built. Kan Etsu in Japan, 11 kilometers. Kudvanga in Norway, 11.4. Mont Blanc in France, 11.6. Albad in Austria, 13.9. St. Gothard in Switzerland. 16.9 kilometers. The Lydal Tunnel will be by far the longest with 24.5 kilometers. And when, in the new millennium, motorists can finally drive into the tunnel, they will be driving into a state-of-the-art tunnel that takes care of motorists' well-being. All necessary safety equipment will have been installed. Comprehensive research has gone into air cleaning methods to eliminate dust and exhaust fumes. Huge fans will extract exhaust from the tunnel so that the air quality is optimal, no matter how heavy the traffic. Caverns on the way through will serve as both turning circles and an interesting change in the 20 minute drive through the mountain. By routing roads through the tunnel, the characteristic landscape along the fjords will be protected. To the great joy of tourists, the mountain sides can still sweep unimpeded right down to the water, undisturbed by an efficient transportation artery connecting the two largest cities of Norway. 